Dave here, how are you? You thought I wasn't gonna show, didn't you? I was just doing quick posts on Facebook and Instagram, and I think they're all done, but I'm gonna do a quick check. Give me a second, I'll have a quick look. And, 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 yeah, all done. We'll close all of that, and there we go. Uh, so you're all up on the side screen, uh, and there was a question there regarding the Bessie parallel clamps. That's only in the new model for an Allen key or an Allen wrench. I haven't used it myself. I haven't really seen the need, you know. Ha. Okay, today is the 12th of July in Australia and New Zealand. The rest of the world is probably the 11th or some areas. Anyway, all good. Ha. Uh, the Aussie Maker Group one worked. Excellent. Good. All right, so, so a big show today. I'm not going to do too much chat at the beginning, and I normally say that and still waffle on. Uh, I will read through what we've got on. We're going to continue with the lathe cart, and, and uh, I'm going to show you I did an amphibian test with the saw stop during the week, I'll and I did a video on that, so I'll report back to you about how that went. Uh, Aspire set out. I did a video I released a couple of days ago on part of this project cutting the handles out and showing you in Aspire how I uh, set the software up and then ran it in the machine. Um, okay. Uh, oh, I got in touch with Avid and they are doing the interview with me next Friday. So I'll do that interview and I might save it for the show. We'll see what happens. Um, we're going to domino and glue the top together on this today. We're going to have a look at the um, Yankee screwdriver. I'm going to use this to assemble a drawer. Instead of you doing this thing, I'm going to cordless still. Oh no, yeah, cordless, yeah. No battery, just Dave Power. <laughs> uh, and, and viewers projects. We've got two viewers projects this week and another one for next week. They're coming in thick and fast. I encourage you to keep doing it. Uh, if you can do that for me, that'd be fantastic. Now, let me see. First thing we're going to do is do the glue up because I want to pull the clamps off before the end of the job and still work on it. With this glue that I use, they say glue up for clamp for half an hour and then you can take it out of the clamps, but no stress. So I'm not going to stress it. I'm just going to work with it. Now over here, I'm going to join of this piece of, this is just that um, beach panel that you can get from Bunnings. And I've, you can, might notice that I put a, a face mark on it. And also down here, I've written a thing, start. Now I'll explain that as we're going on. The plans are coming along. I've got, John is drawing up some plans for the, um, for the roll around cart for my drum sander. And then I'm asking him to do the, the plans for this lathe cart as well. I did have someone ask me during the week, uh, they had a 60 kilo lathe, uh, would melamine be strong enough? I said, look, I think, if you're going to need a lathe cart to take that kind of weight, probably step up to using plywood. See how we go. All right. First thing to do is the domino. I'll move a couple of things off. I set this up. I've been using this during the week too. See, I actually use my tools. Ian. <laughs> uh, I set the show up and it, I think, yeah, everything's good. It'll all fly along nicely. And then I get, I start it and I think, what am I doing? What am I doing? First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a couple of dogs in here and here, and I'll switch the camera over to this one. Put that in there. Uh, because, uh, <laughs> great chap, great. It hasn't even, hasn't even really started yet, buddy. We'll get there, we'll get there. I'm going to switch the camera over to here, and you can still see what's going on. Uh, now, you're going to get a little bit of sound when I do the domino. You may want to turn the volume down a little bit while I use the machine. Now, I did make comment that I've written start here. And I've got a face mark here pointing to this. This is the edge that we're going to glue. So I'm going to pop that there for the moment. Put a clamp on the end. Now, the reason I've got it like that is I'm starting from this end, I'm going to use the domino and I'm going to use the uh, cross stops with it. Now I've already got the Seneca dock plate 
which is 10 millimeters thick, which allows me to use with the RTS 500 that I've also put in here from Seneca. It allows me to do small work with this bigger machine. Something to think about. It's 10 mil thick, so instead of reading off the side at uh, 10 millimeters, uh, it will be zero. So 20 millimeters will be 10 from the bottom of the plate to the center of the cutter. Just a little thing. Uh, I'm over here grabbing the uh, the domino box. I'll let you. I'll bring the camera over here. You can have a quick look. This is what I've been working on during the week. This is the docking station that I've been building, or that I've had a long time ago. So I put all these in. So all of my gear now from here, I don't have to go and find a box for it or a place to put the box down. I just open her up, grab the things out of it that I want, close it, push it shut and it auto closes as well. So that's been a lot of fun and I've done a different style of drawer on those and I'm going to show everyone how to do that another day, another day. All right, so the trim, the cross stops go into the bottom of the domino, even with the, the dock plate on. So there we go, there's, there's the uh, area. This is the dovetail section that drops in. Then I can tighten the clamp up on the back, just here, like so. And then I can set this to wherever I want. So I'm gonna set it at 200 millimeters there. As I was saying the other week, I may not have explained myself terribly well. Down the side of this are little serrations or kind of indents every millimeter. So when I lock it, it perfectly locks onto the position that I set it at. Okay, works very, very well. So I'm going to work from the left hand side. I do have this pin on the bottom of the domino open. I can close them off if I want to. I've closed the other two off. And pop that there, get the hose and also the lead. And I've got the, uh, the machine set to automatic. I could have really got a few more things done, couldn't I? Not to worry, not to worry. Okay, pop this in here. And now, as I say, you may want to put your earmuffs on. I'm going to use this, or not put your earmuffs on. What am I talking about? Turn your volume down. I'm going to set it to a wide oscillation, not, not the narrow one. See, if I flick that around to there, it's pointing to the little skinny one. I don't want, I don't want a tight fit because I'm going to reference and... I'll just switch to the front camera to explain this a little bit. If I did one side all tight and the other side loose, now that's the two settings on the domino, what would happen is as I'm going along and because I'm not measuring, like remember the other week I, I showed you I was measuring and putting a line and putting the cursor on it, because I'm going to reference if they're all loose, they all need to be loose fitting. If they're all tight, they all need to be tight. Otherwise, when I put that pin in a previous domino hole, I'm going to get what's called creep from one point to the next. Okay, so it makes sense. It makes sense. People have asked if I can wear glasses with, with this. Yes, just as long as the lens on here is clean. I'll get the other one because I think it is clean. Yeah, I've got this one nice and clean. All right, here we go. So I can see everything perfectly. Um, I've got that on there. This is held, it's not going to go anywhere. And I'm on wide. I'll go to the other camera again. There we go. Hopefully it's all going to work well. That's referenced straight away. Now I'm going to go into that previous reference hole. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'll go to Carl Cam. I keep on talking loud when this is... 
There we go. So you'll see the reference pin here is going to go into the previous hole that I've already done with the domino. Dropping it in, like so. You can see everything's held nice and flat. This thing gives me a whole lot of stability this way as well, which I love. Into the previous hole again. Off. I'm going to switch to the other end, like so. So you can't push away because of the dogs. I've got John's yellow box shed dogs here, and I'm clamping it there because I am referencing from these holes, and I am putting a bit of pressure sideways. So here we go, a bit more noise. Cool. There's the last hole. I'll bring this over here. And go back to the main camera again. So that's pretty easy. That's, it's magic. I'll show you what it looks like. So they're all of the hot dominoes wide. Okay. All I'm going to be using the dominoes really for is to make sure that the two parts mate up together perfectly flat. I'm trying to reduce the amount of sanding that I do. Now, I've also written start at the same point on the other side. So I'm going to now work from my right hand side on the new piece. Otherwise, if I work both of them from the left and it's been turned around, the whole thing would be jiggered off to one side. All right, keyboard off here, down to there, that off there. I'll bring that around the front. That to there, and morning, all Brian. G'day. You now you're thinking of you. Um, pricey than those, but worth it. Morning, all Westside. Those uh, eye protections are pretty slick. They are indeed. Um, got eye masks from Carbotech. They do not fit me at all. Maybe a nose that's been broken a couple of times may explain why. Russell. I like these ones. I know everyone loves the G6s, but I'm, I really am a fan of these ones. They're a little bit smaller, easier to wear. Maybe you should try those. Um, Wayne Russell, normal in dandy. Are you? <laughs> I, that will be an inside story, I'm guessing. All right. Now, bringing this one over, this is the main board. And you can see here I've got start on this end. When they're together, it'll work. Trust me. <laughs> All right, a couple of dogs in here. And a dog over here. And slider up to there. And I will put a clamp on, but I'm going to clamp it way away from where the domino is. See, even when the workpiece is bigger than the Stanton bench is, it can still handle it. You want one? Okay, Stephanie, how are you? You want one? Description box down the bottom. There's the links for all the stuff that I do now. I've got that set at 200 on the left hand side. So now I'm going to take this one off, like so, and I'm going to get the right hand stop. And I'm going to set it, or it's, I've already set it at 200. Can you see it there? Maybe, maybe not. Hello, everyone. Dave, hi, Steph. Where have you been? Yes, where have you been? And I need to tighten this one. I think that's all good. See, off to the right hand side. Now this one I'm going to work again from the stop that's on the machine itself. Good morning, Planty. So I've got the stop here, the little pin, and then this pin as they're spring loaded. And so when I am moving along after I've done my first hole, this pin will lock into the first hole I've done. It works. It works. Okay. Earmuffs. Eye muffs. And on again. All right. Start from that side. I might switch the camera over to that one. I was going to do it in the first place. So 
There we go. Might be easier because I'll be starting from here. You'll see it a little bit better. Okay, run. Got the volume turned down. First gonna go. There's the hole for the domino. This pin's gonna go in. There it is. And I'm pulling to this side of the hole. There she goes. I'm going in 15 millimeters deep with a five millimeter cutter. Beautiful. Switch cameras again. So lame, I got the 30 minute notice, so I was excited and then fell asleep on the couch. I've actually thought about not doing the 30 minute notice anymore, just going straight in for the, we're live now. What do you think? What do you think? Groove Jet, how are you? Uh, now I'm guessing that's all inside jokes down there in the Melbourne area. And poor old people down in Melbourne. They've kind of been, had a revisit of the bug down there. Now, I've got the clamp set up over here on the back table. So I'm gonna take the show basically over there. No, you need the notice. Okay, all right, well, we'll see what we can do. Um, keep the warning, give you notice, okay. All right, Matt, how are you, buddy? Uh, I'm gonna to switch to, well, I'll move the camera down here first. And this is where we'll do the glue up in a minute. But I'll, I might start up here while I've actually put the glue on. How's that sound? And put the dominoes in. So again, dominoes are down here. I'll move this out of the way. We won't, don't need that anymore. So I'll move things out. I tend to try and push things out of the way while I'm not using them. Um, dominoes are in here in my new drawers, like so, like so. And we're using fives. How many have we got, David? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two, four, five, six, seven. Love it, I love it, I absolutely love it. See, this is what we're using. <laughs> All right. Um, checking that the holes are going to line up and only perfect. Carl, please continue the 30 minute warning self for when I get distracted. Okay. Um, David, you like the notice as well. 95 watching, 26 thumbs up. I've been noticing that the, since I've been doing projects, uh, I'm getting more people watching. You know, 95 now, right at the beginning of the show. Let's see what the numbers are like towards the end of the show. I had a thousand one week, a couple of weeks ago, and 300 last week. It's good. Tell your friends. If, you, if it's fun, if you enjoy doing it, watching it, let your friends know. Okay, here we go. Now, the thing is, glue joints are held together by glue. That's all there is to it. The dominoes are there as a little bit of mechanical strength, but also they're there basically to keep the alignment of the boards perfect. And now notice I've worked from the top of the board. I haven't worked from the underneath and I've worked from both face, faces, what, for, sorry, from the one face, which I don't want to get confused here. I've worked from the one face both sides. I haven't worked from the face on one side and from the underneath of the other side. That's why it's so important to put your face marks on the board as you're going along. What do we got here? I need a hammer. We'll take it over there when we actually do the, um, put them in the clamps. Now, I, it doesn't really need a lot of 
glue down there. There's a bit of glue down the hole, so that pushes out a little bit while it goes in. Don't actually need the hammer for this one. Where's the domino gone? There it is. <laughs> so the glue pushes up around it. And there's another one there. And another one here. Another one here. And the last one, put a little bit more glue down that hole. And I'm also not going to put uh, glue on the receiving side. A lot of people do. I'm going to put a little bit more on, on the dominoes now that are sticking up. One, two, yeah, so as I was saying, if you like the show, that's great. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit while we're going along here. Vicky and I didn't go out this week. Uh, so the dinner, the stimulus dinner sponsors, we got takeaway and we brought it back home because we thought, right, those businesses are still there. But to help them out, what we did was we went, we got takeaway, brought it back here and we had it at home. So it was pizza. We're trying to go to a different business each week just to help them out. You know, it's one of the things with this, <laughs> with this period as well. I know I'm, I'm starting to put a bit of weight on. I don't know about anyone else out there. Is, is anyone else, because you're not getting out as much, noticing the kilos or the pounds slowly coming on? Uh, it's, uh, it's a dangerous thing. But don't let that dissuade you from doing Super Chat to sponsor us for the next, next one. I don't know what we're going to do next time. We'll, we may do Takeaway again. Or we might um, go to a safe place. We were thinking about going up to the RSL Club at Katoomba. Because it's a new building and they've, they're really going to be in dire straits if they're not getting any support. Isn't glue fun? You know, the, you're probably thinking to yourself, why am I wasting my life watching this guy <laughs> do a bit of glue up? Eight kilos, Stephen. Man, oh man, I've put on three. So I'm normally about 80, 81, 82. I've got up to about 85 or 84.5. Yeah, I'm just tipping the scales a little bit. Good morning, Bob. Nearly done. Now, as I say, a lot of people will put glue on both surfaces. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Uh, you're a fatty again, Stephen. My glue brush just fell off the table. I can't have that. Um, Peter, morning, Dave, from Newcastle. Just had, a family, just had the family leave. Did you throw him out the door? Um, RSL was packed last Monday, was it? Excellent. That's great to hear. Well, I might have to find another business to help along. All right, I'm going to now just slide the joint together and we'll go to Carl Cam for this. I can take the dogs out at the back so I can slide it back into a position where you'll be able to watch. And the mouse, where are you? Come on, you've got to be there somewhere. Rotten mouse. <sighs> I can't believe this. Where is it? David, what did you do with it? Keyboard's down there. Has anyone seen it? 87 kilos now. Matt, thank you very much. Um, okay, so I'll show you the picture as soon as I find this rotten mouse. Come on, tell me where, where did I put it, guys? Look, not to worry. We're going to have to just stay. I need to know where it is, that's all, because I'm not going to be able to run the rest of the show without it. Found it. It was right in front of me. Can't believe it. Okay, Carl Cam. Here we go. Up to there. Good. Under the bench. No, it wasn't. It was just to the left. It, it blended in with all these other black things. You know, how do you hide a tree in a forest? All right. There it is. Now, line it up. 
and slowly put them in. Now I've got a little bit of movement there so I can tap it along to wherever it needs to be. Beautiful. How's that? All right, over to the other area now. We'll go to camera three. There it is. As I say, I've got the clamp set up. Bring it over. Just pop it there. Swing this around. Drop it in. See that? It's see how much work the dominoes are doing right away. There's the glue joint there. So I'll slowly pull it up, making sure I've got to tap that along. Put that one on. So I've got these loosely positioned at the moment. Back them off just a touch. I'm going to be trimming all this, so anyone who's thinking, oh, you're a heathen, hitting it with an ordinary claw hammer, uh, it's not going to be a problem. How's that looking? Looking all right? Oh, so nice. Cool. Right, next thing, next thing, I need a couple more clamps. Where's your dead blow hammer, Wayne? Uh, it's around somewhere. <laughs> oh, sorry, Stephen, or whoever, if we ever made that comment. I'll use this, shall I? All's forgiven. <laughs> All right, a couple of clamps on top. Now, I'm not going to put these aimed down. I'm just going to put them flat. That's one of the great things about parallel clamps. And why am I putting them on top and not underneath? Because I want to give even stress to the joint. So it stays flat. This is instead of, beautiful. This is instead of having a, a big timber bar across here. That's lovely. I don't need to do anything else to it. That's gonna, we've got it in the clamps. At what time is it now? Thanks Wayne. The time is 11.28, so I can take it out of the clamps uh, probably around about 5.2. Get the camera back to this one. There you go. That was pretty easy. Now we're going to assemble a drawer using the Yankee screwdriver. So I've had people say, oh, you can't put these things together I'm going to take the, the Stanton bench off the table for the moment. Don't you love it? How easy is that? Because I need to have a nice flat surface for the clamps to go on and also being laminate, nothing sticks to this. You know, well, epoxies do, but my standard glues don't stick to it. All right. So here is my Yankee screwdriver. This is a fitting that I got on eBay. Come on, you can do it. Got it. That's the fitting there. And it's specific for this model. There's different models of Yankee screwdrivers. So don't just go and get one and think it's going to fit because it might be a wrong diameter. So pop him back in. Rotate it until it's in the right spot, and then in it goes. What do you think? So what's going to go in there is my Robertson number two, and it's locked on. Can't pull away. Is that a 1980s Yankee? It is a Stanley Yankee screwdriver made by Stanley West Germany. It's a 130B. That's all I can tell you. So, here we go. Bring this over and take the, that off there. Stephanie, thank you very much. All right, so this is one of the standard drawers that's in 
my lathe cut. So this, that's this one here is the one we're going to put together now. Underneath is all pocket hole. I did this on the pocket hole machine, the, the Foreman, Craig Foreman. And I've got the front and the rear have both got pocket holes in them. Now the front is going to be facing towards me. Spin it around the right way. The rear is going to be at the back. Remember what I said? All of the stuff at the back of the cabinet doesn't get seen. The sides have no pocket holes whatsoever. I feel like a magician. And that one there. Now the trick is to clamp it up. So I need a couple of 600s. Again, you don't need to use these. You can use any clamps that you want. You can use pipe clamps. I'm going to bring it over towards the edge a little bit more so I can work the handles. All right, straight on there. I might go to Carl Cam for this, it might be easier to see. Where are we? That is a whole lot easier to see. Nice demonstration, God bless, thank you, Kayak. Free uh, Yankees from a great grandfather, excellent. What were the part numbers? I didn't quite read that. Um, 1880s. Yankee screwdrivers. You know, I've, I've always wanted one ever since I was a kid. Tighten them up a bit. I'm going to turn the whole thing over, like so. And that's all flush. The tops, because they've all been made the same thickness, they're all flush as well. Now we're going to get two more clamps. And people have said, ah, oh, pocket holes, you've got to rebate. To, so they don't slide, or you've got to use other types of clamps. Yeah, I, I get that, but this way, you don't need to. You watch just here. I don't know if you can see, there's a bit of a gap there. As I tighten this up, pulled it closed, and down here, these ones are all pretty good, but I'm going to put the clamp on it anyway. And there's method to my madness. It's such an easy way to, oh no, this needs pulling up. And it's done it, beautiful. Now I'm gonna make those nice and tight. And over here, nice and tight, beautiful. Now, enter the Yankee screwdriver and the, the screws. There we go. There we go, into there, and away we go. Gotcha. I love it. Now I'm only doing the corners at present. I'm not going to do those two because I've got to put another I put a clamp across here when I move these two out of the way. Into that corner. Done. And I can do these two because the edge of the parallel clamps from both sides is still giving it enough pressure. This is fun. This is the first real test run I've had with it, taking it out for a spin. Now with the Robertson 2 in it, I don't think there's that much chance for it to slip off and dig everywhere, which I think was a lot of people's concern. I'm going to spin this around. Oh, it's a bit of weight in it. Now it's got all the clamps on it. Exactly right. <laughs> a flathead screwdriver. Now, I won't be using that. Okay, over here. And here. <sighs> We're doing well, guys. The time is fantastic. Time. 
time is fantastic. Now this is the bottom, as I said, so it's, it's doing just fine. What do we got here? Now we know you've got arm muscles, <laughs> so don't stress your hernia. No, I won't. Oh, my hernia is fantastic. I, I should have got that done so many years ago. It's, I'm just an idiot for not having it done then. Done, 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 done. Okay, so I can take the top clamps off now. These two, because all this side is done. You spent a few moments in the corner, did you, Greg? Now, if I put this one right in the center, notice that the clamp, the bar, and, and the heads are going to cover those two screws and those two screws. And they're the ones I want to do. Woodworking's fun, Stephanie. Yep, a good, good workout and, a good, and have some fun at the same time. Why not? And the last two I'll come around this side for these. It's free. <laughs> what benefit? Well, it's just a little bit slower. It's not a lot slower, but it's a little bit slower. Um, and it, it, again, it's just something I've always wanted, as a, even as a kid. You know, as an apprentice, I used to have to let me switch the cameras. As an apprentice, I had to do all of this, putting screws in, you know, like this, and my wrist used to get so hot, it was hurt. It really did. You know, I was a 16 year old kid. I didn't have this, the strength I've got even now, stronger than I would have been when I was 16. You know, hit 20, it's a different story. You know, you just really start to get the strength happening because you're maturing. Okay, now we're going to do these ones. So we'll clamp directly over the top. There, I'm going right over the top of the side of the drawer. See, if I go right over the top, of, put the spine directly over the top, rather than going to the side, if I go to the side, I end up flexing the wood and I don't want to do that. So I just want to put all the pressure right down the guts. There and not too tight because I've got to tap them up a little bit if they're if they're slightly out. So I go and get the mallet to make everyone happy. Now the other thing you might notice, my mallet is shorter to the handle from one side than it is to the other. I always hit with this side. I have this mass behind. It works really well. That one's done. It's just squaring them up. The pressure of the screws going in at the bottom on the base tend to um, uh, tend to make the, the sides lean out just a touch. Cool. All righty. Um, I'll move these guys out of the way <clears throat> and bring this back. Have a quick look at how the glue's going. Oh, I love it. I love it, love it, love it, love it. I get excited waiting for the show because I want to keep doing things and I think, no, can't go any further. People will get lost as to where we're up to. Tip that down. So during the week, I start other little projects because <laughs> I'm impatient. Um, this one, that looks all right. Okay, some screws. And where are we? That one's not going in for some strange reason. Elongated head, is it? I'll leave that one out. That one's gone in. All right, you ready? Excited. Done. Next one. Spin her around.
a couple of screws here. Tools can only, can't hurt you, it's only the operator. Yeah, I guess there's a, I guess there's some truth to that. And these ones. This is awkward because I'm up around chest height. Now this is adjustable as well. The Yankee screwdriver, I can go left or right. Like I can go make it work clockwise or counterclockwise. Um, a lot of people get cranky when I say that. It's uh, anti or counter, I don't know. I think both of them are correct. It all depends on which one you're used to. Now the next thing we're going to do is have a look at some viewers projects. So you want to watch that. <sighs> Done. Okay, that drawer is finished. Not too hard, is it? Clamps out of the way. All I have to do now is put the drawer front on. So this, this is the side. No one sees anything down the side. This is the front, so the front will have a draw front over it. We're going to do timber, and the back is buried in the cabinet. You don't need to see it. It's all gone. All right, let's have a look at some viewers projects. I'll go back to this camera here. Um, rag and bone come from uh, Marty. I'm guessing rag and bone man. If you ever watched Steptoe and Son as a kid. That was on TV when I was, you know, before I even was 10, I think. So, uh, Harry Corbett. I think it was Harry Corbett. And I forget who the other guy was, who was the, his dad. They were <laughs> so, he used to go around and pick up from the side of the street and have kind of basically a junkyard and sell stuff out of it. Um, where are we? All right, all right, all right. Okay, so we're going to have a look at Matteo's stuff. So Matteo has been going crazy with the pocket hole screws and he's built himself an outfeed table for his table saw. And it holds a couple of things there. And then we go to another one of Matteo's. You can see the pocket holes on the inside of the cabinet, not from the outside. Wilfred Bramble. Thanks for that, Damien. Uh, and then down here, the last one, it's facing the back. So that's pretty nice. So you can push things over over the uh, saw he's got all that cabinet area there and yeah he can store things in there uh, and also he can use it as an assembly table all right now another thing that we've got is that gary has got in touch with me during the week and he's getting on and he realizes that and it's a little bit sad really because he's a plumber and he's worked hard all his life and now he's just doing a little bit of wood carving he had a full workshop set up in his backyard and he's going to sell his machines. So he's asked me if I knew of anyone, you know, that you can talk about price and everything. Contact me if you're interested. I'm going to show you what he's got. There's four photos. I need you to contact me if you're interested. He's in the Sydney area. So that's probably the closest point. Uh, and so let's have a look at the things that he's got. He's got a benchtop router table with a router in it. He's, that's from above. He's also got a bandsaw and a dust extractor. This is a large, I think this is a 19 or a 21 inch. G'day Annette, how are you? Uh, and you'd have to have a chat to him or ask, he'll probably get in touch with me and say, Dave, it's, it's actually a, an 18 inch. I've got no idea. I think it's around a 20 or a 21. And also he's, <clears throat> pardon me, he's got a little bobbin sander there or a spindle sander up on the bench. It's a Shepak and also a disc and belt sander. So if you're interested in any of those things, please give me a shout uh, through my uh, 
not my phone book, what am I talking about? I'm an idiot, through my email address, which is in the description box down the bottom. And, you know, Gary's, Gary's not up to using them anymore. He just wants to do carving. So someone might be able to grab a bucket. And if you know Gary, he's an extremely fastidious character. So those machines will be in perfect condition. All right, now the next one we're going to have a look at is um, Carl. Now Carl is a gentleman that sent some stuff into me and he's been renovating one room into an office. This is what he started with. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna read while we're having a look at these photos. Hi, I love your show. Here are some pictures of my last project. I'm refurbishing my home. It is an old lumber house and I'm trying to show the old lumber on the old floor here here are some photos from the office. Here's the next photo after he sanded it. <clears throat> um, let me, oh, Susie says, hi. G'day, Susie, how are you? Uh, Mike Hughes, Rag and Bones. Okay, you guys keep talking about those things. Now, the next photo is, I think, a close up. He's used the little 90, uh, Rotex 90 from Festool. And the next photo is the finish. He says the floor is painted with two coats of white primer and one coat with a color. Then I sanded it, sanded it down until it looked old. And now he's putting in all of the ductwork to support the benches. Now, he's been very good building these benches. He's made them out of laminated timbers. And he's, uh, it's oak and he's treated it with Osmo. But let's have a look at the process. These things I always knew as towel rail bolts. So basically there's a, there's a recess that is created for a bolt to be tightened up under the bench. And you see he's got uh, biscuit joins there as well. And the next thing is showing you the little jig that he's made to clamp onto the underside of the bench. And he's got a tiny little dust extractor. See that, it's a Milwaukee. And there's the towel rail bolt in position. So that's locked the joint together really, really well. Uh, now he's doing a dovetail joint. This is fascinating. Unbelievable. You know the story, you can't have too many clamps. There it is. He's dovetailed, there's a step in the bench. If you have a look at the wall, you can see where all the electrical ducting is and supports. And he's created this bench to step down and then come back out again. Both the joints are dovetailed. Uh, this is the Osmo as he's been putting it on. And you can see the step down now after he's sanded that joint nice and clean, the dovetailing, very, very solid. And I think that's the last photo I've got at the offices. Uh, oak treated with Osmo, top oil, high solid, it's a wax oil, best regards, Carl Peter Oakland. You know, I love getting things like that. Sometimes I look at it when all these, you know, a truckload of photos come in, like there was a, <laughs> Carl sent me a lot more photos than what you just saw there. So he's, uh, I, I trimmed it down a little bit, but I do enjoy getting the, those pictures in, if you can send them in to me. All right, what's the next thing we're going to have a look at? Um, let's, Fred, good old Fred Peterson. Now, Fred has sent some photos in to me as well. And he's, you know, I told you he built that plane the same as mine. And now he's built a box for it. And you're not going to believe this. Let's have a look. So there's the outside of the box, and that's a lovely leather handle on it, and he's got some brass fitments. I'm going to read it. He says, Fred says, Hi Dave, I've completed the plane fence and case build. I made the case from native Missouri red cedar. Uh, I flocked the inside. Let's have a look. There it is, opened up. I flocked the inside with wine-colored flocking and added brass hardware on the outside. I've had such a great time with this build that I'm kind of sorry it is com <laughs> completed. Look at that. Isn't it just beautiful? Have a look at that. This is things that, you know, anyway, it's on the back of his ute. He's throwing a, blank, a sheet out on the back of his ute. Or you guys in the States, I guess we call it a flatbed or a pickup. And uh, there it is with the plane in it. How nice is that? Everything is petitioned. I'm going to go back. You can see he's created all of those petitions for the plane and the, and the, the, fit, the joint fence to go in there with it. That is just Beautiful. That is so nice, Fred. He says, um, thank you for giving me inspiration for making something I can be proud of and handing down to one of my heirs. Uh, your input on this was greatly appreciated. Well, you know, Fred, I think, uh, I think you've surpassed my talent. Totally. 
that that is absolutely beautiful uh all right now i'm going to uh yeah peter it's just amazing wasn't it it's it's a credit to you fred uh how are we going for time 10 minutes to go that's fine i was told you i was going to show you the uh the saw stopped uh test here we go now there's a bit of sound in this so stand near the uh near your trigger to reduce the sound it should be all right though so here we go dave here how dave here how are you i'm doing a test with the amphibian i've plugged it into a 10 amp outlet so i'll show you how it works 10 amp plug into a 10 amp power point in Australia. Turning it on, coming back to here, I'm going to trip it, there you go, done. Then back to there. Next thing I'm gonna do is plug this into here. Give me a second. Uh, a bit awkward with one hand, but I will get there. And she's right. And in she goes. Good, now I'm gonna come over to the saw. And here we go. I've got the switch. Turn it on, it's doing its test, just to check that everything's happening. This is a saw stop. Okay, all good. Turn the saw on. Yes, working beautifully. There you go, it works for saw stop. Okay, so there's the myth. I was told that the saw stop would not run on that. I did not, got to remember, I did not put any timber over the saw. I didn't have a dado stack in it. My understanding is on the startup, that is when it's going to draw the most ampage. Now, if you were to get one of those amphibian 15 to 10 amp adapters, remember they're not a replacement for a 15 amp power point. It will just enable you to run a 15 amp if it doesn't draw more than 2400 watts. That's the story. You can get them from Bunnings or directly from um, Amphibian themselves on their website. I have no relationship with Bunnings, so I'm just letting you know. The reason being, if you buy one <laughs> and you buy a saw stop and plug it in and it doesn't work, you can return it. That, that's all there is to it. Uh, the other option is to put in a 15 amp outlet and that's going to cost you a bit more than what the Amphibians cost. So as a public interest, let you know what was happening. Um, now, I'm going to show you a couple of pictures from when I was doing the lead up to this point I'm at with this top on this particular device. Uh, here we go. Now there's no sound. I've turned the sound off on this totally. Basically, this is getting the uh, thicknessing down the uh, pine, the four by two pine or 90 by 45 to uh, get it ready to put on the underside of the roll around cart. I'll wait till it comes out of there. I'm very happy with that. People ask me if I like that thicknessing machine. It's a cracker. I love it. There's hardly any snipe. It just does a lovely job. And now I've got the casters set on the bottom and they're all put in with roofing screws, two inch roofing screws. You can see it's still upside down on the cart, on the, um, on the other cart that I've got there in the workshop. And it's there up the right way. I don't know how long these photos are going to take, but we'll move along. And you can see I've got the, I put the lathe and the Sorby Pro Edge on top just to get a feeling for how wide I needed to make the top and for, you know, the different tools and things that were going to go in there. Now, the next one is I've already gone into Aspire with the, um, the software to create these handles so I can drag the machine directly out from the wall towards me. So, the, this is the machine just running away. This is the uh, Avid CNC. And, you know, some people say that they don't think it's real woodwork. Well, it's just another router to me. It's a beautiful machine. And it, it took around, I don't know, 40 or 50 seconds to cut them cut the pieces out and we're basically getting towards where we are now I think I put it over the jointer as well the machine's going to park itself and I get it out of there and where are we going to where are we going to take it next 
Oh, it's over to the jointer. All right, so this is dressing the edge ready for joining. And I do have the hand planes and I could have done it with a hand plane, but if you've got the machinery, why not use it? Now I try and keep my hand down a bit so I'm below the top of the fence so I can keep, maintain pressure to keep the, the piece of timber I'm putting over the jointer um, perpendicular to the bed. I don't get my hand down too low, it gets dangerous if you go down too low, you're going to run the risk of your fingers dropping down into the cutter head. But it's something you really do need to just focus on and go slowly. Don't rush it, and if you're good with the machine, it's going to be good to you. Basically, that's all there is to it. <clears throat> now, I ended up getting another panel as well and ripping a piece off it. The reason being, it, uh, it, when you get this stuff, it's only 600 wide, and I needed mine to be around 670 wide for my bench top. So, hence, I've... Uh, Exactly right, Russell. The operator is, is all important as far as that's concerned. So this is ripping off another piece. And then what am I doing? Oh, that's right. I'm going to put it through the thickness. And the good thing about this machine is it's got a little test dial at the top. So a little depth gauge. So it lets you know exactly how much you're going to take in one pass. So that's why I'm just mucking around with it there. You can see the indicator is lifting up a tiny little bit. I always go very shallow pass to start, just in case that the timber's not even in thickness and it might have a, a bit of a hump down the middle and it makes the machine work a little bit harder than I'm happy about it. <clears throat> so that was a very shallow pass. I'll do another pass just to get it to the thickness that I want. And aren't you glad that I turned the sound off <laughs> on these particular things? What I'm doing now, why I'm not there, is I've gone over and I'm matching it against the, the larger piece and seeing how much more I needed to take off. We're going to go over slightly a little bit today, but that's all right. I think this is the end of it. We'll come back and then we'll set the trim router up and we'll do the, the um, clean the things up. Is that it? Yes, it is. And here we go. Here's the, we had takeaway last night, as I said, some pizza from the local guys. And they're the people that threw in the super chat for us. And but rather than go out, this is kind of our feeling sorry for everyone down at uh, down in Victoria. Back to me again. So that's that's basically the travelling along as far as the cart's concerned. I can take it out of the clamps now, which I will. I was going to put the screws into this and put this last drawer in, but we might do that next week. I'll put this to the side. I wanted to get this last part done. I'll take her out of the clamps. Doesn't take long. Bring her over. So you can see the join. What a cute couple, eh? <laughs> ah, if you want to say so. All right, I'm going to use the card scraper just to get rid of that bit of glue that's on the, surf on the surface. See? Wasn't too hard. Now I'm going to flip her over and do the same on the other side. Good. And spin her around this way. Just knock that on the floor, that's okay. And with my bench, this, with this other top here, I built it so that I can put, um, it's got a big overhang on this end, so I can clamp things onto it really easy. Even e easier with a Stanley, hey? Number 80. It was a good restoration you did on that one. Now, the trim router. Now, this particular trim router, 
white type bond blue? Well, because it's the one I had, Cole. <laughs> um, this router, has, this is my own base that I made for it, lives in the, um, the multifunction table I built up there. So this, all I do is release that and I can turn this to adjust the height up and down. And it's very easy to do that. And I've set it there. Now I'm going to do a climb cut. I've got a lot of control over this and it's only a small cutter. So instead of going around clockwise in the cut, I'm going to go counterclockwise. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, there you go. I said thank you. <laughs> Turn this, remove that, remove that one. And I'm going to plug the, the router into it. I have made a small, Gen B, you love Baroness, do you? She's a cutie. Always check that the machine is turned off before you plug it into a power supply because there's nothing scarier than these things turning themselves on when you don't expect them to be on. <laughs> That's all there is to it. Now this came out of the CNC. This is basically how it's happened. It's come out of the CNC. It's still got a little bit of uh, lug in the bottom from the, uh, the tabs. If you watch the video I left, released on Friday, you'll see when I go through this in Aspire, like all the CAD work and the CAM, and then actually ran it on the CNC, that I had left tabs in there. So I'm going to put these on. And I may even switch the cameras around to down here. So you can watch a little bit closer. There you go. All good. You may want to turn the sound down. Fair warning. Okay, so I'm going to do a climb cut, drop in, and I'm going to hold onto it. I can go just a tiny bit deeper and a little bit faster. So now I'm going to release the clamp and pull it back down just a touch, lock the clamp, see how we go. That's all right, that'll stand off. I'll flip her over. The other side, this is the top. Notice there's no tear out when I do a climb cut. Lovely. Just a little bit of sand on that and that'll all come up. All right, where are we? Okay, let me come up to the front picture here. Okay, why is it called a climb cut? Because you've got conventional and climb. So conventional is going this direction, 
clockwise on the inside of a, of a cut. If I was going around the outside, I'd be going counterclockwise, and that's a conventional cut there as well. Understand? So with a climb cut, it is possible for the router to grab a hold and climb right out of the thing that you're cutting. The reason being, I'm going with the direction of the cutter. I'm not going against the direction. If I'm going against the direction of, direction of the cutter, I have more control. Going the other way, it's wanting to take off and, and climb out. But the thing is, when you're doing a climb cut, let's see if I can show you a little bit more holding it up so you can see. With a climb cut, as it's going around, it's biting into the timber at the approach. As it's leaving, it's coming out the other side where the cut has already happened, so it doesn't make any difference. A conventional cut going the other direction, it's climbing, it's cutting in and also pushing up. So the cutter is always, pardon me, the cutter is always trying to chip out the, the timber it's approaching. It's a, it's a pretty easy thing to get a hold of. All right, we've got, sorry, I, I didn't mean to say that in a demeaning way, but that, that's why. Martin, thanks Dave, not a problem, my pleasure. I'm gonna check quickly that we've covered everything. The amphibian did not work on a three horse dust extractor. So I tried it on the Powermatic three horse dusty. It started going and then click, it, the, the circuit breaker tripped. It was just too much for it to pull. So be aware, it's, it's not a 15 amp replacement. But for saw stop and for my table saw and for my air conditioner, which is a 15 amp, works perfectly. All right, thanks, John. <clears throat> I'm going to quickly check on here. Okay, so the lathe cut, the amphibian, um, Aspire, the handles, Domino glue the thing together, viewers projects, Yankee screwdriver. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'm not doing the Wednesday shows anymore. If you like what I'm doing, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. This is a regular thing. I will be doing projects going forward every Sunday. There'll be something interesting. You can ask me questions as we're going. And uh, why not? Why not? It's free. You know, it's not costing you anything to, to, to watch or to learn. If you want to, you can help me out as well by becoming a patron. And also in the links down below, they, most of those are affiliate links. I will get a consideration from the business that the link is to, but it is no extra cost to you. It's the same as if you go onto their website any other way. So just letting you know, I'm affiliated now with Carbotech. That's something that's you know just a fantastic thing. Um, TSO, Seneca, and a few others down there. Have a look. And if you can use my links to purchase online, I much appreciate it. All right, that's it. I think that's all coming down to here. Thanks for watching. Look after yourselves. Be nice to each other. And I shall see you next week. Bye.